Hey, what's you going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop for another exciting episode in trying to get my bands out of cut straight. <laughs> well, we're going to get her one of these days. Anyways, uh, my saw is still not cutting straight, but I don't have a new blade on it yet. I'm going to get a new blade this week, so we'll find out where that takes us. But in the meantime, I was doing some research on my saw, trying to figure out what I can do, what other checks I can do, what other setups to try to make it cut straighter than it's cutting. One of the things I found was you do a coplanar check. Coplanar. That's to check to see that, that the top wheel is rotating uh, in alignment with the bottom wheel. So that they're both totally vertically in a line. And I think it also means horizontally in a line. Uh, so if you can just picture, now you have one wheel here and one wheel here, right? So if this wheel is, is in a little bit from it, like this, well they're not coplanar. Uh, so that makes the band twist as, the, as it goes between wheels. The other thing is, they could be perfectly in line vertically, but if they're twisted like this, that means as the blade comes down, it twists off the top blade onto the bottom blade, and then so on, right? So the blade is sort of making a figure eight as it goes around, if you can follow all that. And I'm thinking that might be a cause for my bandsaw to be drifting. Anyways, let's go check for coplanar. We're going to check vertical first because I know how to do that. I'm not sure how to do the horizontal coplanar check just yet. So let's go do the vertical one. Okay, so I've taken the girds off my saw and taken the table and everything right off. The, saw, the blade is still on it. I left the blade on because we have to tension the blade in order to keep pressure on this upper wheel because that wheel will flop around without the blade on it. So I'm checking now and the blade is tracking dead center of the top wheel but it's towards the front on the bottom wheel. So when I see that I think maybe these this wheel and this wheel are not aligned vertically. Right? I think this top wheel is back further than the bottom wheel. When I'm doing my research about this, it says coplanar it's it's a worthwhile check to do and to make sure that it's as accurate as can be, but it's not a hundred percent critical. Like if it's not totally coplanar like the world's not going to end. Don't sell your stocks and bonds just yet because the coplanar of the wheel is not that important. But anyway, I'm just going to check it. So in order to check it, what I've done is I've tied a string on up here and I'm going to pull this string over the front. There's lots of different ways to check this. I like to use, well I don't like to, this is <laughs> what I have the most luck with is with the string method. So. Uh, the string is touching on the rim of the upper wheel here, so what I wanted to do is to see, just as it comes in contact with the rim of the bottom wheel, what is its status related to the bottom wheel. So I'm going to try and get a close-up shot of this to see if we can see it better. Okay, I'm not sure how good we're going to be able to see this, but if you look uh, way up at the top there, the string, see, it's uh, just touching the top rim of the wheel. And as I bring the string down and it just touches the bottom ring, oh, I, I keep a pretty good tension on the string too. Because uh, if, if you let the string go slack, it's, it's, not accurate, it's not as accurate. So as I bring the string down and it just touches the bottom rail, you can see it just touching it right there. Now when I pan down to the bottom wheel, there, you can see it pretty good there. So... You can't see the top wheel now, but the string, I'm taking it away and just bringing it in until it just touches the bottom rim of the top wheel. And you can see there's a gap right there. So that means that this bottom wheel is too far to the right, looking at it this way. Alright, to address that, I'm going to take this bottom wheel off. And I have a couple of washers, or I'm going to look for a couple of washers, to put behind this wheel to bring this bottom wheel out a little. And then we'll recheck for alignment. And there's a bolt here in the center that holds the, bed, the wheel on. And FYI, it's a left-handed thread. So now the wheel just slips off the shaft. Like so. Now's a good chance too uh, to clean the rubber band. I've managed to find a couple of washers. I wasn't sure how much it was out, but uh, these two washers together, I don't know, make up about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to put those on there. And then, 
put our bolt back in the middle remembering that it's a left-handed thread so we righty loosen lefty tighten on this one <laughs> snug her up a little all right we're back again here with our string and we have our band uh, tracking better look whoop. just to show down here on the bottom wheel now the band is more in the middle of this bottom roller or bottom wheel so that's a lot better just to begin with so as I pan back up here put some tension on my string just as it touches the bottom well it can't even touch the bottom now it just barely touches the bottom and just as the string starts to touch the bottom rollers the bottom the rims on the bottom wheels like right here and at the bottom it is just touching the top one so you know that's darn near perfect there's where it's just touching on the bottom wheel right there you probably can't see it too good on the camera but that's darn near perfect I like that a lot okay so what I have here is a straight edge it's 36 inches long we used to call these yardsticks back in the day when the yard was a thing now what I'm going to do to try to check and see if the blades are not tipped this way like on an angle I measured this gap at about 32 down here uh, when I was in the center of the wheel so I'm going to move to each side of the wheel and measure that gap now and see if there's a difference so, when I measure from, when I put my straight edge on the top wheel from edge to edge, I measure, like I say, that was around 30, 30, 32 thou in there. When I go to the outside edge and measure that gap, it's about the same, 30 to 32 thou. And when I measure on the back edge of the wheel, it's about the same, 30 to 32 thou. So after doing all these tests and checks and measurements to make sure that our wheels are coplanar, uh, I don't really don't know how important that is because what happens is when you track the blade on the top wheel, you're you're changing the attitude of this top wheel anyways. So you know the fuss that I put into making this coplanar, I'm just wondering, was it a waste of time? But uh, at least it's done and. Uh, I know that's not an issue now. So after all our setup now, what I'm going to try and do is uh, I have this piece of softwood again. I'm just going to try and rip it, put my fence on once more. So let's see how we make out. So what I did was I made sure that uh, my table was as parallel to the blade as I could get it, but you see it's still drifting off here. So my next step, put a new blade in her, see what happens. <laughs> I don't know man, bandsaws, go figure. I don't know if this bandsaw will ever cut straight. I'm sure it will at some point. But I know now there's, there's some things that we fixed already that did make a difference so I know that's not causing it not to cut straight like we adjusted the guide blocks or made new guide blocks and adjusted them so it's not the guide blocks it's not the thrust bearing uh, the table is square and parallel to the blade so it's not that the wheels are coplanar so it's not that I don't know I, I haven't seen the list of possible problems that could cause it not to cut straight but we're checking a few of the boxes off anyways <laughs> anyhow this week I'm gonna go to town and buy myself a new blade uh, I hope to get a, a decent one, but we'll see about that. See what it's available in town first of all, because uh, it seems to me bandsaw blades are not real. You know, there's not a lot of them around, not around my neck of the woods anyhow. But bandsaw cutting crooked, story of my life. <laughs> Listen, if you have any ideas about what could uh, cause this to go afoul like it is, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to read them, read about them, and study them because I've been reading a lot about bandsaws the last little while. And they're quite a little beast. They're not just a simple little machine that you buy, stick in the corner, and you just cut on it daily. It takes a lot of maintenance, a lot of care, a lot of setup, a lot of tuning, as I'm finding out. 
So anyway, like I say, if you have any ideas, please leave a comment or two. I'd love to read about them. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And for all you viewers that come in regular every time I post a video, thanks very much for that. I sure appreciate it. It's just unbelievable, the support that you give me. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you each and every one of you. Uh, I'm going to get this bandsaw to cut straight. You watch and see. <laughs> I hope you're not tired watching episodes about it, though, before it finally does cut straight. <laughs> in the meantime, stay safe, everyone. Stay healthy. Don't forget, COVID-19 is still around, uh, and it'll get you if you're not careful. So we'll see you next time in Grampy's Workshop. We'll talk to you soon.